Welcome back to another video. I haven't been here in maybe two weeks now. So the first thing I want to do, which is the first thing I always do, is get a fire going. As you've just noticed, I've been to collect some of this cedar bark and I'm just stripping away these fibers because they're all tightly packed together and it's all about loosening those, those fibers up. To show you how I got to this stage, here we are, I've got my pile of, of bark. I've just picked this up. In fact, the Viking house is only a short walk from here, maybe five minute walk from here. And you know what? When we were making that bark roof, it was hard work, but there were lots of pieces left over. Not only are they good for cordage, but they're great for making a tinder bundle, a bird's nest, to put your ember into and blow that into a flame. The way I do it, I'm sure you've all seen it before, the way I do it is I just break the outer bark and I forcefully, maybe carefully as well, peel away the inner fibres from the outer bark. If there's any bits of bark left over, I just get rid of them like that. What we want is this lovely orangey bark and then it's just a matter of peeling strands away from this giant piece of inner bark. So what I really want to do is end up with lots, with a big handful of these dry, fine fibers. I always say fire lighting is in the prep. The more you prep, the easier your fire lighting will become. We're not in a rush. It's probably about 5, 5.30 in the evening. It's quite warm. It's about 20 degrees. I think I'm going to be sleeping quite comfortably tonight. So I've almost finished peeling all these fibers away to end up with lots of individual strands of inner bark. Well, I think that's probably enough. So now that I've ended up with this handful of inner bark, what I want to do is turn it into a big fluffy bird's nest. And the way to do that is quite aggressively rub all the fibers together. As you can see already, it's starting to break up and it's those individual fibers that we want, a big nest of them. You wanna try and avoid inhaling that dust. I don't think it'll do you any good. And there we are.
So while that fire burns down, I'll just talk you through how I got the ember. I pulled these three out of my bag and then I pulled out a bit of charred cloth tinder. This is great stuff. I didn't actually use this, so I'll leave it there. I placed my charred cloth tinder into the end. I then slammed it down rapidly. The rubber washer right here traps the air. The air's got nowhere to go. When air is trapped and comp compressed rapidly, it heats up. Now, I showed you with charred cloth, it gives you a little dull, very well, quite a dull flash of fire. I'm now going to demonstrate with a piece of cotton wool. Why cotton wool? Well, the cotton wool will give us a good visual. So just remember, when air is rapidly compressed, it heats up. So I'll just place that in just past that entrance there. I'm now going to slam it down. Hopefully, in that moment of compression, in that moment of heat, we'll see a fire, a flash, a very bright fire. Three, two, one. We don't get the ember like we do with charred cloth. We only get a bright flash of fire. Once again, I just use this for demonstrational purposes. You know, I use the char cloth. We could have used amadou or maybe some chaga or maybe some King Alfred's cake or cramp ball fungus. But these kits come with charred cloth anyway. So that's why I wanted to demonstrate how to create fire using a fire piston and this see-through transparent barrel. So once again, cotton wool goes into the barrel. Then the rod goes in with the seal, with the rubber washer right there. Slam it down, and you can see a flash of light. If anyone's interested, I'll leave a link below. So while that's cooking away, I thought I'd treat myself to a pint of ale. Hello. Hello. What do you want? Oh, you want to come up here? Hey, I'll spill my beer if you jump up. Cheers. Hey, hey. Bishop's Finger. What a name. <laughs> Amber, what do you want? What do you want? Easy with that tail. Come here then. Ugh. Hey, you want some pork as well, don't you? Amber. Yeah, good girl. Ugh. So I've got some pork on the go. In fact, I'm grilling that pork. It's got a nice little marinade on it, an Asian marinade. That's the clue. 
Now, can you tell me, comment below if you know what vegetable this is? What is it? This stuff, I absolutely love this stuff. So I'll start off with frying these and then I'll add the leaves. So the pork's done, I'll just move it to the side. Now I need to get my frying pan on there. A little bit of oil. So I don't want the garlic or the ginger to burn. That's why I'm gonna add them right at the end. I think I could have done with a bigger pan. <laughs> And then one more thing, I've got some stir fry sauce in this packet because I know this is going to boost the flavour. I don't need much, not even half. And there we have it. Nice and simple, stir fried veg in the woods. Slightly overkill on the chopstick, but you know what? They work. Wow. That's so tasty. I love these vegetables so much. Hmm? I bet you like them too, don't you? Mm hmm. Yeah, Papa, I love those vegetables. Ah. Oh, this pork is so tasty as well. Mm. So as I'm staying the night here tonight, I thought I'd treat myself to a nice meal. Once again, cooking good in the woods.
So I've had some dinner, it was real good. I've just prepared my bed for the night so that I don't have to mess around when it's dark. Oh Amber, you want me to throw the ball? I might throw the ball for Amber as well. And this is my bed for the night. I've got my bivy bag. In there I've got an inflatable mattress which packs away pretty small, great for hiking. And I've also got my sleeping bag. All in there. So it's gonna be nice and cozy in the shelter with that fire going and probably Amber to keep me warm. I've got a feeling Amber will be jumping on top of me, probably sleeping on me, squashing me, but probably keeping me warm as well. <laughs> well, what did I say? I think I know where Amber's sleeping tonight. So dinner was a few hours ago. Since then I've been chilling out here with Amber, just enjoying the woodland, the peacefulness, the fire, the crackling of the fire. I've had to put quite a lot of wood on tonight. The wood I've been feeding the fire has been very dry. And being pine, it burns quite quick, but it burns hot as well. So I've been thinking about plans for the camp. I've been thinking about the ways I can improve this woodland camp. I've got a few ideas on how I can turn this into a super shelter. I think what I'll do with this camp is this will be a slow but ongoing project. It won't all be done in a day or two days or a weekend. It might well be completed over the next year or two. But when it's done, I guarantee you this will be one absolutely awesome super shelter. There's something about camping out in the woodland or even out on the coast or anywhere. It's so peaceful and quiet. And I always get a really good night's sleep when I'm out camping, sleeping out in the wild. It's the fresh air. And I think something as well, it's that bird noise. It's the bird song you wake up to. It's nature's alarm clock that wakes you up early in the morning and you feel fresh. So on that note, cheers, and I'll see you all in the morning. Good night. Well, morning everyone, that was a good night's sleep. I woke up at around four o'clock in the morning to what sounded like two owls very nearby having an argument. Oh, they were loud. I fell asleep shortly after that. So now what I think I might do is put the kettle on, make a cup of tea and I've noticed the fire still smouldering away. So it didn't fully go out. Amber slept on top of me the whole night. Was it uncomfortable? Yeah, just a little. So this is my bivy bag. I've got my sleeping bag inside. And then, be and then below that, I've got this, which is similar to a thermarest. It's a very thin, lightweight, hiking, inflatable mat. And this bag, this was my pillow. I had it tucked away underneath my bivy bag. On top of that, the hood of my sleeping bag. Yeah, you know, it wasn't too bad.
Well, if you've watched the whole video up until now, thank you very much. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. I want to eat some more melon. I want to finish my tea. And I think I'll pack up and head home. I'll leave a link below to the sporks, to the cooksters, and to those transparent fire pistons. <laughs> about the stuff <laughs> <laughs>